Xers and everyone out there. Aren't you glad? Aren't we glad we woke up this morning? All thanks to God. We hope you've been refreshed, maganda at masarap ang tulog nyo kagabi. Energized to face this day. I am Chiki Pablo and I'll be your host for today's episode. Question of the day. Sino dito ang walang problema sa pera? Sino sa inyo ang walang utang? Sana all, ba? Diba? Today, we will hear about financial failures turn success stories. Wow, ang ganda siguro ng kwento niyan. Ay, hindi siguro, sigurado. Maganda yung kwento niyan. If you want to experience financial freedom, stick around because we guarantee you an amazing and educational episode. Promise! Otherwise, may money-back guarantee. Meron ba, Pastor Roy? <laughs> joke, joke, joke. Okay, of course, all our shows are brought to you for free because of our love for you. Diba? Before we dive into the discussion, I'd like to introduce to you my partner host, Riva Galvestan. Hi, Riva. Good morning. Good morning, Chicky, and good morning to everyone joining. As it truly, it's a good morning because God is good and He has brought us here. So yes, chikit yes, totoo yan. You said that libre. This show is for free. That's why I encourage you to forward this to your friends and family via our social media channels. We have CCF Life to the Max on Facebook, CCF Life to the Max on Instagram, and on YouTube. We are streaming live right now also via zoom so we'd like to see you later we have our discussion group where you can chat with others and you'll see more of our zoom details later so chiki are you excited to earn more yes. money I need pala, to manage what god has entrusted to you and god the willing if you want to increase it for you to be a blessing all the more right chiki Yes, so let me introduce our first guest for today. It's uh, an honor to introduce him. He's a phenomenal, phenomenally, phenomenally successful, phenomenally successful entrepreneur who graduated from De La Salle University in Manila uh, with a degree in business management. He's currently the CEO and founder of Great Deals E-Commerce Corporation. So i-Google nyo na, Great Deals. So you can get a great deal. Steve will tell us later how. He started this company and is, this company is now the leading end-to-end e-commerce solution provider in the Philippines, recognized in 2022 by the Financial Times as the fastest growing e-commerce company in the Asia Pacific region and now listed in the top 500 corporations in the Philippines. Amazing. He's also an Alibaba Business School e-founder fellow, an awardee of the 2022 Man Smith Enterprise Innovators and was named the 2022 Ernst and Young Philippines Technology Entrepreneur of the Year, and daming 2022. But thank God he's with us here in 2023, despite all those happenings. More importantly, he's been married for 24 years, his loving wife, and has four loving daughters supporting him as well. Let's give a warm welcome to our dear brother Steve C. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all the life maxers. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you here this morning. Nako, thank you, Steve, for accepting our invitation, considering I know we know that you're such a very busy businessman. Diba? So thank you. Thank you, okay, thank you very much. So my next pleasure. that Yes, <laughs> we're excited to hear from you. Okay, next that we would like to introduce to you is a beautiful couple led by the master of the house who was born in the Philippines but also grew up in Vancouver, Canada. Hindi ho Canada, ha? Canada. <laughs> he graduated cum laude from Menlo College School of Business Administration in Palo Alto, California, USA, and took special courses at Harvard University in Boston, Massachusetts, where he graduated with honors. All of 20 years, he was an entrepreneur owning and operating five businesses engaged in garments, retail, transportation, 
Warehouse Consulting and Import and Export Brokerage. Whew! Dami. In the year 2000, he became a full-time pastor of CCF Alabang. He is also a certified teacher in financial stewardship. And he is happily married to Cindy Marquez. And together, they have three adult children. Meanwhile, his wife, Cindy, who's always beautiful, love her hair all the time, tolerant, <laughs> is a graduate of UP Diliman, whose career began at Manila Peninsula Hotel, followed by a major move to Macan Erickson Advertising until she married and started a family. She has been licensed real estate broker for the past 20 years. She's also a helpmate to her husband in the ministry, most especially in teaching how to live simply and clutter-free. I'd love to see their house inside. Dear Life Maxers and friends, it is my privilege and pleasure to introduce to you Pastor Jovi and Cindy Soriano. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. <laughs> Hello, good morning, Life to the Maxers. It's a joy to be with you guys. Looking forward to this day with you. So happy to be here. Really excited to spend this next hour with all of you. Hello to everyone. Yeah, the whole, we're so excited to hear from all three, Pastor Joby, Cindy, and Steve. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. So first of all, again, thank you, thank you to everybody you know, for accepting the invitation. I just, I can't contain my excitement for our audience because I know they'll greatly, they will greatly be inspired and encouraged when they get to listen to your stories. But before anything else, to our viewers out there, sino sa inyo ang gustong dumami ang pera? <laughs> dami, ang dami. Nabibigin ako. <laughs> Before anything else, okay. Um, sigurado, lahat tayo, okay. Ako, especially, gusto ko dumami pera ko. Blessed by God, of course. Pastor Joby, with your kind indulgence, can you show us how to multiply money? Ay, very, very simple. Watch, watch this, huh? Here, can you all see this? 20 pesos? Yes. Okay, yes. 20 pesos. Nothing here, nothing here. Yeah. It's all there, huh? I will uh, multiply it very simply. You have to divide. <gasps> the multiple, huh? You have to divide. If you don't divide, how can you multiply? But you know what? When you divide and divide and you keep on dividing, it becomes one, 1,000 pesos. There you go. Getting <laughs> here. Okay. Wow, ang galing. Okay, Magic show na to. Magic show. That was a fake 20 peso bill. Huh? I didn't care for real bill. Don't worry. <laughs> when you were doing it, my mouth was wide open. Parang, oh my goodness, he's staring the 20 peso bill. Miracle or magic? Nako. <laughs> Walang himala, sabi nga. <laughs> but seriously you, now, Pastor Joe. You yeah, learn yeah. very quickly when we talk. Huh? Okay. Pastor Joby, can you give us a brief background about family, where you were born into? Okay. Um, maybe some of you don't know. My, my dad was a, a movie actor, and uh, we grew up in a very uh, simple home. Uh, my dad was not a luxurious spender, so I learned how to stay within budget. Uh, we lived in a moderate house traveled once in a while. It was a loving family. I had four, we're four total kids. And uh, yeah, my parents loved each other and were a good example to us. One thing your dad mm. didn't tell you was that he'd support you only until college. Oh, yes. And the day after college, you're on your own. Yeah. He said, when I, when you graduate from college, you're on your own. And really, we were wow. on our own. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, okay. You iba kasi, di ba, now, hindi. The parents still support even after college. Wow, what's this? Again? How about you, Steve? Can you tell us a little something about your growing up years? So, <clears throat> when I was still, uh, I think in terms of uh, business, I started very early in my days, no? So, grade two, I still remember, I will buy wow. stickers. Sa tapat ng school namin, isang pad. And then cut it out and sell it at 50 cents to one peso so that yung mga classmate ko can afford it because yung isang sticker was five pesos. So I'll earn around six to seven pesos and then use it 
to buy ano, mga Wonder Boy, mga pandagdag sa, sa recess. <laughs> so wow. those were my Was that your idea? Was that your idea or your parents? No, no. It was, I think, uh, I saw the opportunity that mahilig yung mga stickers. So I just bought one hole and then cut it out so that I could sell it to my classmates. Wow. <laughs> How many were you in the family? Are you the only son? No, so we're six siblings in the family. No, so mm -hmm. I'm the eldest among six. No, and also I have a brother who's also a pastor. Ah, how nice. Oh yeah, Riva, do you have a question? I have a question if uh for Pastor Juby, if the one thousand peso bill Bayon or fake this? <laughs> yun, <laughs> yun. Yun, yun. Yun, yun. Yun, yun. Yun, yun. I actually have a question for uh, Tita Cindy. So let's just uh, backtrack to when you met Pastor Joby, uh, when you got married, and how, how were the financial arrangements back then? Did you talk about it? What were the things? Well, we were very, very different backgrounds, so our financial arrangements were quite different as well. You know, he came from a home that was, uh, they were a little bit, well, better off than in us in a, in a way because we were from a family of nine kids. Pure, my dad was an employee, my mom was a teacher uh, in international school, and at that, in those days, just minimum salary. So he, raising nine children, we didn't have much, but we had enough. And so uh, when I when he married me, uh, wala akong ano, inheritance, nothing. I just brought my clothes into his house. <laughs> and so um, I didn't know much about money. All I knew as a career woman was you earn a living, you, har you know, hard earn money, and then you spend it. <laughs> I, I didn't save much, although my dad taught me to save when I was a little girl. I had a savings account, but I didn't think of building savings for my future i just thought of surviving month to month as a young yeah. woman yeah. you know you don't plan to be a financial guru right in those days <clears throat> as wise na yung women and so when we married iba talaga ang financial understandings you know i married him he was a businessman running a uh, at that time five businesses and then he was also employed so he was earning quite oh. uh, a good amount of money and so i thought oh i made <laughs> i thought ah, okay, <laughs> oh, i'm sorry and uh, and so because he was busy what he did was he also didn't know i was clueless so he said can you handle all the money matters because all i'll do is earn it business Ito yung mga cheque are, are earning so minuman yay <laughs> you know and uh, i tried to manage it without god's guidance we were christians but we didn't have the principles from the Bible yeah. how to operate our money. So we were doing it the way the world would. I tried to balance everything, but I would spend without him knowing. Long story short, that's when we got into a financial uh, mess because we were not transparent with one another. We were not discussing it. He was busy. I was trying to you know, manage it. And so, of course, we got into trouble financially and also his business did so that's a long story back yeah and that's why we had to solve it god's way we went to financial stewardship seminar you know that's the crown. seminar crown, crown ministries yeah. and because of crown ministries we became so attached to the principles of god's word that we became crown ministry uh, partners and we worked in asia for them oh wow that's so interesting <laughs> And so now you're okay now financially because you've been to the seminars and you're actually conducting the seminars. I don't think we'll be here if we problem. Okay. Um, you know, now that you've mentioned no, a little bit about your business background, pero ano, mabilis lang, did you meet in church, Pastor Joby and Cindy? Where did you meet? Yeah, we were we met in the singles ministry. Uh-uh. We, we forgot. We huh? started the singles ministry of CCF. <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh. But we met before that. I, you know, I was a single woman who started her life really not knowing God. Quickly, I'll tell you the story. I got to know the Lord uh, through hardships and trials in my single life, broken heart, etc. Riva knows my life, Riva Reeves. and because of that, it drove me to surrender my life to God. 
he put me in a corner because I was so hard-headed. You know, when you're hard-headed, he'll force you talaga to look up, you know. So I did. Yeah. And the first thing I did when I came to finally surrender to God, I said, Lord, I want to grow. So the first person who came to my mind was an elderly woman who was my tita, who was a believer. I went to her and I said, teach me the Bible. And so she taught me the Bible every week. But, you know, little did I know in that little office every week we would meet, in walks a man, a prodigal son, who was him. <laughs> he was not walking with God yet, but he walked in into my life that moment when I was having a Bible study. And that's how we met. So we met. Oh. Wow, galing. Galing how God fixes things no, in our lives. Yeah. So, okay, back to business. Okay, so now we know a little bit about your business background, but what influenced you to get into business? I know, I understand, no, Steve, that your family into business. So, I guess... Your parents ba, they were habang baby ka pa, businessman. Habang nasa chan ka pa, businessman ka, anak, businessman. Pa- paano ba? How did you get influenced? So, uh, I would say, uh, laking Divisoria ako. No? So, hmm. you have a store in Divisoria. So, talagang, uh, I would say, true-blooded entrepreneur, never been employed in my life. No? So, talaga, I think uh, we were trained to do business at a very early age. And I could mm. see how my parents do business <clears throat> during summers. Pinapapunta kami ng store, magbabantay kami, may piso kami, mm. katapunta, at saka yung libreng merienda. Alam nila yung ano, eh, puso ko, is eh, mahilig ako kumain, foodie. So I think those were the training days that I had uh, in terms of uh, in terms of finances, in terms of handling money. I would say our family is... Uh, masasabi natin um, in terms of pag pinag-usapan topic, I think business and finance or money is quite uh, prioritized in our family. So at a very young age, I have the drive to really make it in life, to really make it ano, um, to to be able to become a millionaire, kumbaga. So kahit ang college ko, I like to, to share a little bit, was I had the goal of earning my first million by age 21 or pag graduate ko ng college. Wow. Yan, no? And I had this realization when I hit that 1 million because I was selling ano, eh, t-shirt and watches during that time. May, mm-hmm. may kinuha nga akong, ano, I still remember, sa Estradas, along Lasal, may kinuha akong taga-type ko para may nagta-type ng mga projects ko while I'm doing business. <laughs> So, kinontrata ko per page, 4 pesos per page kasi mabagal ako mag-type. <laughs> but then, uh, afterwards, I think the realization was when I had my first million on the bank, um, I was already at Christian Dem at CCF. And when I look at the passbook, may 1 million. And then, sabi ko, ito na ba yung buhay ko? Is this life all about? So, at a very early age, I had this realization na parang God... Ito na ba yun? Will you look at my bank account and say, ano to, 1 million, 10 million, 100 million? So parang, it never really, parang at a very young age, may realization na ako na life is more than just making money. Yeah. yeah. So so when when your parents were telling you, oh, ikaw magbantay sa store, hindi ka naman naiinis kasi, syempre, you would rather play, di ba? You did it wholeheartedly. Uh, I think may in- we were incentivized to do business. Uh, uh, you know, my, my parents will tell me, go to the market, you'll earn uh, parang 50 cents per yard if you sell something. So, may mga incentive kami <laughs> that was given to us so that we are able to, you know, uh, learn how to do business at a very young age. Uh, and also, just to clarify, nung pinapatype mo yung mga report mo, ikaw naman yung gumawa ng report mo, right? Nagtatype uh, lang siya. Ako naman gumawa ng report, no? Kailangan lang may nagtype, nang may nagtatype. Hindi nga okay. katulad ngayon, may chat GPT na, mas madali. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess it's in the DNA, no, of the Chinese to engage in business. Generally speaking, ha, I have a, quite a number of Chinese friends and they're all in business. Parang it's a fact that most who make it big in business in the Philippines are Chinois. Parang ganun eh, no? Okay, so now let's learn naman kay, ano, kay Pastor Joby, you had five businesses. Mm-hmm. What got you into the first business and second and third and fourth and fifth? 
Hey, your wow. dad was an actor. You could have been an actor, right? <laughs> That's the last thing I want to be. My Tagalog is terrible, so I just stuck to business. Since he told us that we were on our own after college, I decided at the age of 15 to start working. So I worked in a restaurant. I was a dishwasher. I became a busboy, a waiter, everything I could. So I, I started saving money so that when I graduate from college, I have some savings to move out, have my own place and start working. And to me, it was all about uh, sustaining my life. So I, I like Steve, I was uh, uh, passionate to become a millionaire, but in my case, at the age of 30. So I worked hard, hard and every business I could think of because I, I learned from college how to set up businesses. I set up a business at the age of 25. I became a millionaire and my dream became a nightmare because I did not realize satisfaction, uh, enjoyment. It was emptiness. And mm -hmm. that's why I became a Christian at the age of 26. And then life changed. Yeah. Ah. When you when you were a bus boy and working, you were in the States, in, I, Canada. in Canada. Yes. Oh, in Canada. <laughs> yes. When did you come back here? In uh, I was 21 years old after college. I came back ah, here. after college. So yes. the businesses that you started were here in the Philippines. Here in the Philippines, yes. I saw that there what were was many the very people. first. Yeah. The very first one was uh, customs brokerage, uh, import oh. export, because I was working full time at the airport in a custom bonded warehouse, and many uh -uh. people would come to me and say, "Can you please help us release our cargo?" And I said, "That's not our business. That's someone else's." But since many people came to me, I said, "Oh, there's an opportunity." So that's why I started a brokerage. Ah, so parang it was on the side. You were employed yeah. and then on the side. Exactly. It was on the side. And my boss allowed me to do it for as long as I, it doesn't conflict with my time. Yeah. So that was the very first one. Yeah. And what was the second one? Since I was an avid uh, windsurfer who loved to go to the beach, every, wow. weekend, every weekend we were there. And the clothes that we'd wear are all sports basketball things like yeah like said, why don't we have beach wear you know surf wear. surf wear so that uh -huh. gave me an idea so i set up the only total beach shop in the philippines called onshore and it was Ooh. a fantastic business we set up several branches all over and uh it was it was fantastic it, it did very very well but it started very oh. small, very yeah. small he would make like 20 pairs of shorts go to the beach on a weekend and when he on a sunday all his shorts were sold so he'll come back do 30 pairs of shorts and 30 shorts on a sunday sold until it became a wholesale yes. sort of thing so he started small oh. yeah very small yeah. Until it came shops and a factory so dude hey dude pastor yeah. judy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah ano pala? so did you have the shorts sold or you yes. bought them and then First, oh, I had your people, design. First, I had yeah. people consign it, and then later, later on, on, I started designing the the shorts, and we made it, and having it made eventually in a factory in Cavite. So oh, wow, it was that big. You yeah. had your own factory now. Yeah, wow, so that's and then your third business. The third business was uh, people wanted to import uh, pets Sweet. in those days. Pets, yeah. and so yeah. I put up Pet Air Express. Anyone who wanted to bring a pet in into the Philippines or outdoor. We took care of all the paperwork, all the quarantine, all the details. Negotiante talaga to. And so, Parang si Steve. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and the, the fourth oh, one was... Uh, the lost baggage. Was lost baggage in the airport. People who arrive with delayed baggage have to come back the next day. In those days. In those days. And go through all the mess yeah. of getting into the airport, claiming their baggage. So this is very simple. We got the contracts of the airlines to deliver all the delayed baggage. Yeah. So yeah. 20 airlines signed up and then we did all the baggage delivery. Transport. We were married by then. No? Yes. Yes. Oh, that is, that's good because no? you were in the you were in the area, ne, di ba? Yes. So parang kinuha mo na lahat ng pwedeng mo business in that yeah. place. And Except I had all for the, the shorts. The, the, ano, the airline so. managers as well. So that was easy. Yeah. But that business what? that business Chiki Riva, Steve, was God given. Yeah. Because there was a time in our life. Uh, thank God that we were already doing financial stewardship. You know how 
times can change. All of a sudden, you like you can yeah. be employed 20 years and the next day you wake up, your job is gone. And if you yeah. don't practice financial stewardship, you won't be prepared for that bad day. So praise God, we had our money matters in order. One day, Joey yeah. came home and told me, Cindy, I, I just got fired. You know, uh, his company that he worked with for many years was bought by another big corporation. They promised yeah. to make him the president, CEO, but after he passed on the information, they just kicked him out a very, the same, you know, after a month. And they didn't give him notice except a day's notice. So he was home. He was like wondering, what do I do? How can I provide? But we thank yeah. God, number one, we had no debt. And we didn't, we didn't have any mortgage. And we were ready for a rainy day. And we just prayed. He kept praying, God, give me wisdom what to do, wisdom. And God gave yeah. him that wisdom to start uh, the company called Best, B-E-S-T. And we named it Baggage Express Service Transit. And so God allowed us to earn more than he used to earn with the five businesses. And I was able to homeschool because I had to stop schooling to save. You know? I homeschooled for my elementary years with my kids. And life changed. But because now we our, our money matters were in order at the right time. Wow, galing. So I guess even when you had the checks coming in and you were handling the budget for the house, hindi ka naman credit card ng credit card to go shopping. Uh, hindi naman, kasi hindi uso nun yung credit card. Hindi <laughs> 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 masyado yung credit card. Wow. Hanggang yeah. ngayon, hindi uso sa amin yan. <laughs> Buti na lang, ano? Galing. Uh -huh. Oh, so, uh, Riva, you wanna ask them your question? Yeah. COD, pag kay Pastor Joby, hindi <laughs> na sinu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for, for sharing. Uh, at Chiki, naalala mo ba yung five businesses? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll yes. have a later, but yeah. But I think more than the business is uh, Pastor Joby using his God-given gift to uh, create an enterprise that honors God. Yeah, That's what yeah. We can always use it for our selfish purposes. So let me ask you, uh, let's ask Steve first. You said you wanted to be a millionaire at uh, age 21, right? 21? Mm, yeah. Yes. Uh, what, was, uh, what was your motivation? And you said that, okay, you have 1 million in the back. So what was it for? What did you use it for? Uh, what were your financial goals? Or pag na reach mo na yung 1 million, tapos na? Or 100 million na ba yung next? So what was really driving you back then? And what did you use it for? Uh, another another one of my goals is, sabi ko, gusto ko mag na. And I found my my partner in life sa single seat retreat. No? So, oh, so, wow. Wow. Ayaw, ah. Galing yan. And then, uh, <clears throat> Ang concern ko lang is, uh, I made the goal na I need to have at least 5 million in the bank for me to get married so that I could provide well for my wife. No? So yun yung another set ng goal na ginagawa ko in terms of uh, parang criteria for me to get married no? during that time. So we got married, uh, met her single street 1996, we got married at 1999 yun, and started our own family. And the Sabi sa Bible also, I still remember that you need to leave and cleave. Uh, the man separates his father and mother and be united to his wife. So I started my own insurance business, or I, sell, I sold insurance, left the family business so that I could have parang uh, leave and cleave principle ko with, with me and my wife, uh, starting as a family. Yeah. Oh, wow. So. Meron ka na agad business that time to you know sustain your family and you had that in in the plan na talaga Steve. Uh, it's more of uh, we're helping the family business. Ah. But you said the with my parents was I started a new business uh, business business unit importation kami ng mga ano, ng mga imported goods from Thailand from Korea from and also I was handling that business unit and then mm. uh, when I got married made the decision to really leave and leave and start our own as a family so eh, nung time na yun, parang I have a knack for selling insurance because I was referring my friends and they were buying so sabi ko sige na nga um, ito na lang gawin ko magbeta na ako ng insurance no? so I was uh -huh. in the insurance industry for 10 years uh, wow before, before ano 
was it was it yeah. easy to tell your parents na ano uh, I'm going to do my business this way and leave our family business must have been hard mas madali dahil una anim kami magkakapatid so may papasahan ah. <laughs> no but basically kasi di ba uh, the eldest always uh, follows the family business but it was yeah. easier because I have so much siblings mm-hmm. that can take over during that time so mm. I could have my own path, parang start my own path in terms of the insurance industry during that time. Yeah. Oh wow. So mas maganda na you had your own. Maraming ibaring uh, kausap, mahirap din Steve. Too many people in the, in the business, right? Yeah. Just wanted to greet uh, Miriam and RD Roberto from Boracay. Thank you for Hello. joining Good us. Morning. Yes, uh, nice to see you. And they also have their own YouTube channel, so to promote. <laughs> Hello po daw, idol. Idol ka daw, Sir Steve. Ayan. <laughs> yes, thank you for uh, uh, sharing with us uh, your greeting for today. Yeah. So let's go to, well, well, of course, we've been talking about financial success in the business. How about the times when you got into financial trouble? Yan, yun yung gusto nating malaman. Kasi hindi naman always successful. Ikaw muna, Steve. What happened? Sige, sige. And then Pastor so, alam mo, nasabi ko nga kay Pastor Joby, I thank God for, <clears throat> I was able to attend this 10-week How to Handle Finances during the early 2000s. It was, I was able to, you know, it helped me a lot in terms of my uh, spiritual walk with the Lord. No? So, at a, as, a, as I've shared to you, I was, uh, I would say I was a very, uh, competitive, successful achiever at a very young age. And I thought I could, you know, uh, I give tithes, I give to missionary, ganyan. So feeling ko talaga parang uh, conquer, parang ano, uh, cannot be beaten, kumbaga, no? I was with the Lord, walking with the Lord, but then yun nga, it happened. No? Uh, I made the wrong investment and I was in debt for 32 million pesos at age... Wow! At age 27. <laughs> so, hindi ka na nakakatulog nun? So, it was really one of my hardest uh, time nung time na yun, no? Uh, because I was in debt not only for 32 million, but I was in debt for 12 years. No? 12 long years. So, I think, and damning lessons, y- ito yung gusto kong i-share to all of our viewers, the lessons of, you know, still trusting the Lord, even though you have to go through your desert experience. And I was thankful for my church, for my D group, because during those times, wala ka talaga hang on kundi, you know, your spiritual family, your immediate family. And I still remember uh, during that time, I, I have two, two kids when I got into debt. And wala talaga yung pera, I have to buy NFA rice for my kids. And one one very visual what happened was uh isa sa mga kamag-anak namin i have utang and sabi ko bilhin ko kunin mo na lang yung table ko sa chair ng office ko and kinuha niya talaga no walang hard feeling pero yung visual na parang kinukuha lahat ng gamit ko sa bahay uh, nangyari yon no so for me it was more of that impact na I have to go through this and it took me around you know i was talking to pastor peter junetai sabi niya, if it takes you a lifetime to pay just keep on paying and when i when i started paying ito talaga nangyayari third fourth first two years i was vigorous in paying my debt but then pagdating mo ng third fourth fifth year you get depressed you know there's a struggle na parang lord nakita ko yung mga kaibigan ko everybody's ano na Umangat sa buhay, I'm still paying off my debt. And I was technically earning good because I was very good in selling insurance. But there was really no savings because I was paying off my debt for 12 years. No? So yun yung, I would say, my desert experience that helped me a lot in terms of uh, building my character, building my you know dependence on the Lord. Yun. Grabe, no? Um... So, 
our audience now, I just want to say that if you feel really bad now because you're in debt, thank you for that story, Steve. No, because at 27, you were 32 million pesos in pesos, naman, di ba? Hindi naman dollars. Pesos, pesos. <laughs> Okay, so 32 million pesos, and you had to pay that in a span of 12 years. Yeah, and I really didn't know how long I could pay it off. Because 32 million during that time was so huge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was so huge na <laughs> talaga alam kung sa ako ko I just oh. keep on working, keep on working. Uh, tipid. Sabi nga, first lesson ni Pastor Joby, live below your means. Diba, Pastor Joby? That's right, yeah. Yeah, so ah. we have a budget to live below my means so that I'll be able to pay off my debt monthly so that, uh -oh. you know, those are the you know, trying times of our life. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. During those times, you said you had two kids already. Were they uh, young pa or they had an idea of what was going on already? So they were, they, well, uh, they were young. Uh, so I had another one during during the twelve years. So tatlong daughters ako nung time na yon. Okay. So they, they grew up, you know. I would say uh, frugal in life. Ah, okay. So but that's good. So, so hindi naman si hindi naman sila yung type na. Bakit ganon? Bakit tayo sobrang frugal? Tapos yung classmate ko ganito ganyan. Wala uh, naman silang ganong reklamo. Ang kagandahan niyan, uh, We made the choice to do homeschool also. So, ah. <laughs> comparison, wala masyado. And, but it was, the, the homeschool part was more of by choice, talaga, we want to homeschool our kids. Not because yeah. of financial, I know, but more of we want to build their character also in terms of yeah. walking the Lord. Yeah. Uh -oh. Well, God fixed it then. Thanks for sharing to us, no, na hindi lang all roses or good good events yung nangyari sa you but there was also a time when you got depressed and what you did was you you kept reading the bible right you kept going to your d group you didn't mm -hmm. stop that kasi yung iba sa atin yeah. run away from god also yun lahat ng natutunan ko how to handle finances i always try to ano uh, to follow god's god's principle in terms yeah. and with the hope that one day i will reach my promised land Wow. Okay. Lord, Where is... years, Moses. <laughs> <laughs> there is a hope. There is hope for a lot of us. Yes. Yes. There is hope for a lot of us. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So now that we've learned from Steve, Pastor Jody from Five Businesses, what happened? Anyare. Okay. L your listeners here have to realize that certain things happen in your life which are out of your control. In 1990, there was a Philippine crisis of electricity. There were brownouts all over the place. Yeah. When it happened, it affected the businesses, the factory. especially our factory. Everything was electric, sewing machines, and so we had to shut down. So no production, no sales, no income, debt. It wasn't our fault, but it was a circumstance. So everyone listening, you have to prepare for emergencies. Yeah. What happened is that I had to, I had to humble myself. I had to confess to God that uh, I need his help. I repented for being presumptuous, thinking that I was in charge of my business. I asked him for wisdom and I I had to, with Cindy, we had to downsize, we had to sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Tell, tell them what that we did. Um, when you're earning regularly, sometimes you think you are in control, even as a Christian, you think you'd know it so well, you're so brilliant already, it's second nature to you. Earning money is easy. Of course, it feels that way, but sometimes when God really wants to teach you a lesson for you to become a better mm -hmm. minister for him in the future, he will take you through a tunnel so that you will realize, hey, you don't have it together. So we, we had to shut down. We had to pay people. We had to pay our suppliers, and we had no money to pay. And uh, because of that, we had to change our lifestyle totally. Uh, we were living in a subdivision, renting a home, and uh, I, we had to sell our extra car. We had to pull the children out of school. We had to talk to each supplier of our material because we were buying material from abroad. We had to talk to our suppliers about our debt, uh, why we're in debt, and how we are going to pay you. So face-to-face, -face, we spoke to them. Yeah. We made a promise to pay them monthly a certain amount. 
of course, we told them this is all we could afford. In other words, we did the practical thing, the humble thing, but we did not let our debt go unpaid. We really made it a point to pay. So I, we had to sell everything inside our house. Tama ka, Steve. Um, pati yung collections niya, yung mga damit namin. Everything. I would have weekend garage sales. Viva, that's how we started the decluttering seminars because one day, uh, you know, we realized we had to sell. And uh, by God's grace, I got hold of a book. And the, the author of the, in America gave me the rights to teach it. It's called The Clutter's Last Stand, which is why CCF has one of the most extensive decluttering seminars, diba? And that's all because of the experience, Job and I went, our, our valley. And praise God, you know, we, Pamaka Steve, homeschool is the best. We chose to homeschool. We paid our debt by the grace of God, and we've been debt free ever since. Ever since, and um, we have learned to live below our means, not within, much way below. We do not assume that we will always be earning. You no. Know. But the the key is really going to God and asking Him for wisdom to get you out of debt. Mm -hmm. We tell people have an emergency fund, and we did, but it wasn't enough to keep us going. Yeah. Look what happened to all of us. During COVID. COVID, COVID hit. And everything changed. So there, there's wisdom in preparing and not being so dependent on, on your own income. So you've got to be wise for times that come beyond your control. We believe in giving God first. Let's say you earn an income. Maybe it falls into your lap. You know, you worked hard this month and it's more than what you need. You give God first. Always God. And then after you do that, you take care of your um, obligations. Make sure you pay people your prom and you don't have debt. And then you save. Always learn to save. And we used to say six months, buffer. Uh, assume you won't work for six months. Now it's yeah. a year. Save enough for one year. And, of course, God provides, no? When you when you say na you give to God first, so, alimbawa, meron kang utang, di ba? Laki-laki ng utang mo. And then money comes in. You don't pay the utang first, but you set aside for God first. That's what you're yeah. saying. Yes. Oh, so what do you? How do you answer people who say what? But God can understand. I have to pay utang inahabul ako, and God naman pwede hindi ako habulin eh. So how do you? How do you address that? You have to be so secure in God's sovereignty that promise. you you honor Him first, and He will honor you by giving you. The ability to earn because let's let's face it bottom line god gives us the ability to earn okay. income it's the only one that's it and uh yeah. testimony your life testimony as a believer in christ is so important that can ruin that so you have to understand when you give to god god says I, you know just just test me in this i'm gonna show you and so when we give God back everything, besides, you know what? He owns everything. Who are we to script on him, right? So we give God first because we know we honor him, we bless him, and we owe him our life. We owe him our life. Yeah. So why not? And then we see in the land of the living, we see him give so much more. He's always true to his word. Yes. So parang, I don't know, tights first. We can never see grabe. That. Yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> Parang ano no, God provides you with O2 oxygen for free. So dun palang yeah. kailangan na, di ba? Parang balik mo na, 10% lang naman yung hinihingi. Okay. For, for you ba, Steve, ganun din? You, you uh, paid your tithes first or was it debt first? Magpakatotoo ka. Tight <laughs> first, tight first, definitely. Uh, I'm a believer of God's promises. You know, and God loves a cheerful giver. So talaga we keep tight first before I then we live below our means so that we'll be able to pay off something. Month on month on month on month. <laughs> years on years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Steve, how were you finally able to pay off the thirty two million? I mean, I know of course you were saying living uh, below your means, but oh. how else did you finance it? How long did it take to really do it? Uh, it took me 12 years to really pay off all of my debt. Uh, I sold out, I sold my insurance agency. And with that amount of money, I was able to pay off my debt and started another business. 
So yun yung parang for the last, I would say, uh, insurance was a key moment that I was able to pay off all of this debt uh, totally, no? Uh, before I ventured into e-commerce. So mm. it was a... So meron din na I opened up shops in Glorieta, sold cell phone accessories also during that time so that pa fast track yung pagbayad ko rin ng, ng debt ko. Mm. Okay, when you were going through uh, ito, the financial difficulty, Pastor and Cindy, nag-away ba kayo? Cindy, were you like, grabe naman, pinakasalang ko to? Eh, di ba dapat siya yung prophet, priest, and king? And, ano nangyari? My goodness. Does, was there even a time when you wanted to separate? Actually, it was teamwork. We both cried. <laughs> We, we said we need to really get together, together and as one work it out. So walang sisihan. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing we learned is between husband and wife, there should never be secrets. Eh. Kailangan walang sikreto. Especially when it comes to money. Uh, wives out there, if you're listening, I know the also now is when you shop, you hide your shopping from the husband. Because you're, you're it's so expensive or something like that. But there should not, not be secrets. We never fought, Chiki, Riva, we never fought. By the grace of God, yeah. we never even blamed one another. We just decided to dig in yeah. and do the work that had to be done because we wanted to be victorious in that area of our life. You know, the hardest thing is to minister to others when you are not victorious in that area of your life or whatever area. So we wanted to stand on a very firm foundation, have strong convictions. But of course, we were crying sometimes because... Pati yung favorite yeah. ng table na collection niya, nilabas ko na sa garage kasi bebenta ko na. And uh, the beautiful thing about it is we never held on to what we had. Yeah. We were not uh, grabbers. Yung parang we were willing to let go, di ba? Up yes. to this day. And uh, it's very humbling to stand down from your old status in life. It's very humbling to talk to people about your debt and to accept it. But... I think it's one thing that God wants to remove from us. That idea that money or the amount of money in the bank is your success. Yes. Or the fact that you're married, you're successful. Or the fact that, you know, you're you're always happy. That's not the point. The point is, are you continuously maturing in learning about who God is in your life? Are you learning more about Him, trusting Him more, living by faith more? That's it. You know, to me, that's yeah. the essence of, you know, even raising our kids. Yeah. It was a lesson that we learned, and it was the most precious lesson yeah. that uh, we need God um, to really sustain us. Indeed. And that's why you're guided by biblical principles. Because some people say, oh, yeah, God will provide. But, of course, uh, we have to also cooperate with God yes. in obeying Him. So, Dita Cindy, you mentioned your kids. How uh, did you explain to them the financial situation, that the trouble you were going through? I know you already shared how you and Pastor Joby dealt with it, but how is it with the kids? And how important is it uh, to you know have your family members uh, involved in this problem too? They were so young. you know. Uh, may, maybe Miles was a baby. Jake was maybe barely four years old. Sandra was barely 10. So we, what we did, we learned from our mentors. You give them what they can understand. So when they saw us letting go of stuff, we explained to them that, you know, Dad and I have collected so much, but we also owe people. And in the Bible, it's important that we pay our debt. So if, you, if we want to please the Lord, it's what about pleasing God, eh? So if you want to please the Lord, we need to pay our debt. So you know, sila sila rin nagbebenta ng lemonade, gagawa ng kalamansi juice during garage sales. Sa kanila, enjoy na enjoy. Mom, can I bring out all my clothes? Take a word to help. I don't want to buy new clothes. You know, they were excited. You know, and then they had coin boxes. They would count the money. And then we would teach them it's to pay our debt. And we would even give tithes from our sales. So my children learned, our children learned, that it wasn't a problem that depressed us, but we kind of made it a family thing to also enjoy what we were doing and in the process bless other people with so now people have learned to do garage sales even you know just to raise funds if they needed funds the beautiful thing about it is our children learn to be frugal mm -mm. they learn that it's not yeah. brand names that they don't have to impress people that they can live a simple life that before they buy anything they pray and they they think about it you know for 24 hours 
So they learned these lessons from our mistakes, yeah. which was precious. And, and you know, would you believe to this day, I can say, and if my kids are watching this, they don't tell you the truth. We never even bought them a cell phone. Example, yeah. we never said, hey, here's a cell phone. No, they wanted cell phones and save for it. You buy it your own. Buy your cell phone. Yeah. You know, up to this day, they want to upgrade. Wala na, wala na. They learn talaga na you work for what you have. Yes. Of course, we gift them once in a while when they deserve it. And we want to bless them, yes. But they know. They know that they have to work hard for what they have. So it's wow. good that yeah, it's good, Tiki, that Titas and Pastor Joby actually involved their kids and not they didn't hide it from them, not uh, sugarcoating it. So now they're applying also what they learned from uh, what they went through. And by yeah. the way, we live on a budget, huh? We have a budget. He gives me my budget for personal expense. And he has his own. We know what our budget is. And sometimes we don't even spend it. So we, we also really practice talaga budgeting. Good budgeting. Yes, indeed. And uh, following through with it. Because you can have a budget, but just it's just on paper. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, Steve, you mentioned earlier, right, how things turned around for you. We want to know more details about um, how great deals became great deals. <laughs> And where did you start and how did this evolve? I know it was during the e-commerce time. And uh, I, I remember yung mga Ensogo pa that time. <laughs> cash, cash, uh, those are the things. Uh, so it, let us know, Steve, how how this evolved. So so I, I, as I have shared, I've been a businessman. And isa sa mga struggle ko talaga was paying taxes. No? Uh, yun yung isa sa mga struggle ko. So I was praying to the Lord, Lord, I started the e-commerce business 2014, no. But then during 2017, when I set up the corporation already, I had this prayer. Sabi ko, Lord, ano gusto ko i-honor kita sa negosyo ko rin. Ayaw ko na yung, you know, uh, I think umabot ako sa level na, Lord, gusto ko magbayad ng tamang taxes na. No? At I want that challenge na mabubuhay itong negosyo ko, even with the right uh, paying of taxes. I think that I, I was in that uh, inflection point ng time na yun. And God gave me this business, yung Great Deals E-Commerce Corporation. Na, there's only one book. We pay all our taxes. We pay our people right. And because of this, sabi ko nga, uh, we were also one of the few companies that was able to get funded by in institutional investors because we have one book. So our company was investable because we were faithful in our we were faithful na lord ito yung gusto namin yung tama no and sabi ko nga uh, this is my promised land because this is something that i believe that the lord has put into my stewardship in terms of this company that lahat ng mga lessons learned ko about finances about handling finances about growing capabilities capacity was with this company and i said to the lord na may you use us properly to be able to be, you know, an inspiration that there is hope and there is life even with ta with paying the right taxes. So I think those were uh, parang answered prayer for me in terms of, it, it, it was very hard. Huh? I was telling, uh, I had paid so much penalties kasi mali-mali. Kahit meron kang right intention, pero pag hindi mo pa rin alam, you have to pay penalties pa rin. And I did pay those penalties. But as the as the years goes by yun nga mas ano siya mas uh, it it came to a right foundation that we were able to scale things up because we were doing the right, we made the right foundation of paying on with having just one box and i i can't stress it so much because a lot of us would like to try to shortcut it na hindi mo na buy ng taxes but everything and then one day may investor ka hindi na makapag-invest dahil ang daming tax liabilities and legal obligations. No? So talagang sabi ko nga, hindsight-wise, it was God's grace and blessing na we follow Him and His principles and He'll be the one to bless us. Mm -mm. I'm just curious, Steve. Um, mm -hmm. how, when you sold your insurance business, you got into itong e-commerce right away? Tama ba? Okay. Uh, Who is it? Business, pero, yeah. In terms of, ano, uh, yung pinaka early days was I was a wholesaler or I, I was supplying to Ensogo, Cash Cash Pinoy, and Group One during the infancy stage. 
And then, nung November 2014, I just have some products ng, I put it in Lazada because slow moving siya. But then, November 11, I have a few thousand power banks in my warehouse and it got sold in just one day. And I was shocked. Sabi ko, anong klaseng animal tong e-commerce na to? And started really <laughs> focusing on learning about the e-commerce in just industry, 2014, which is nine years ago. No? And those were the learnings that talagang I saw the opportunity na uh, e-commerce will continue to grow. I closed all of my offline store and just focused on online. So that yung limited resources ko, I can, pwede ko mapaikot na mapaikot. Hanggang lumago. Grabe. That's God's wisdom, no? Yes. Galing. And with the right For heart, sure. Kiki. Kasi yes. this time around, Steve committed to the Lord to honor yes. Him how He had the Lord. Yeah. So, okay. So, Pastor Joby, um, you mentioned no kanina what turned things around for you. So little by little, you would pay off your debts. But the little by little, saan nang gagaling yung little by little na yun? It, it came from all of our sales. We uh, downsized. We sold the car. So we, we sold everything we could. Uh, cut down our expenses. Then little by little, the businesses that I had were also funding these uh, these debts. Until it was ah. all paid. Finally, after two years, so it didn't take us twelve wow. years, Steve. Two years. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, lang. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's your estimate, ba, Pastor Joby? Because uh, see, Steve, he was brave enough to say he was in debt for thirty-two million at the age of twenty-seven. How about you guys? You were in debt for about more or less. This was in 19, 1990. 90. It was uh, two million. Well, oh, okay. quite a lot back then. Wow, yeah. that's super big. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And two million pesos. Yes. Pesos. Uh, yeah, yeah. pesos. Because if it's dollars, it's a lot of pressure. Okay. <laughs> Times yeah. 50. What? What? Yeah. Times 50. Times 50 per okay. dollar. Or what is the rate now? Yes. <laughs> right. Right. So, Pastor Joby, during that time, um, the downsized, cut on so many things. Did you get into painting? Because we have here a picture of paintings from you, which yeah. we're sharing with everyone. So can okay. you tell us the story behind these paintings? Wow. Parang, ano ah, Picasso. Oh. Ang <laughs> no, let me tell you. This is a good life lesson for everyone listening. Get rich quick schemes. Do not, do not get involved in a get rich quick scheme because there's no such thing. Someone asked me yeah. to invest with them uh, 50,000 pesos and I would get 70,000 in six months. In the 80s, in the 80s. In the 80s, yeah. So can you imagine 20,000 in just six months? It was crazy. So I invested and then I learned after a month that they all disappeared from the country. They all ran away with wow. all the investors' monies. I went to their office to try to get back my money. They said, sorry, everyone's gone. But just get whatever you want. I said, get whatever I want. Are you kidding me? But people were grabbing the telephone, the paper shredder, the printers. I looked around. He says, oh, get these paintings. And they were ugly paintings. I, uh, sorry. No, huh? they're not ugly. They looked ugly to me. <laughs> I grabbed them and I brought them home. And I was crying because I lost my money. But years later, uh, a Christian came to my house. He was a Christian artist. And he looked at the paintings and said, do you know what these paintings are? These are painted by Malang. And I said, who's Malang? Impala. He's a martial artist. At that time, we didn't meet yeah. him yet. So he told me, they're, they're worth quite more than what you spent, so. than you invested. So it was a life lesson. But guys, do not get into get-rich-quick schemes. Okay. <laughs> so in short, uh, if you can get some paintings, go ahead. That will appreciate <laughs> no matter who the artist is. But all that the more was, malang, right? That was God's grace. Really, God's yeah. grace. Yeah. yeah. So Pastor Joby, uh, you shared what you learned. Of course, don't get into the get rich quickly or anything that seems to be, you know. Too good to be true. Yeah. Too fast. Yeah, too too fast for its real time. You should be um, you know earning such a thing. Of course, there's some good deals also, right? Great deals, pala like yeah. Steve. But <laughs> of course, always listen. So, um, Pastor Joby, how would you uh, share like uh, your perspective and attitude towards money, especially after that um, mm. you know training you went through? I know 
we won't go through the 10 weeks, but maybe we can give some insight on how um, it changed for you. How was it before? And uh, how do you see it now with God's perspective? To me, I, I always tell people, success is not a lot of money. It's not wealth. Success is contentment. Contentment is greater than riches because you have peace of heart. You have a relationship with God. So find contentment. Realize that, you know, God is the owner of everything. First and foremost, he owns everything. And we are simply stewards of what he's given us. So be a good steward of what God has given you. Make sure that you tithe, you honor him by giving back to God, really what he owns. And uh, and he will take care of you. He will provide for you. He'll take care of all, the, all your needs. Uh, it's faithfulness. Be faithful in that area. And uh, I also learned that in the process of following God's design for money matters, it's also important to invest in yourself. What do I mean? Always try to find ways to improve your own personal uh, gifts so that, you know, like if you have to take a seminar to be able to earn something, do that. Early in our marriage, I I asked him permission if I could enroll in in a technical course for orchid culture, how to propagate and uh, uh, grow orchids. These are ornamental, expensive plants. And through that lesson, I became in the 80s, uh, in the 90s, little plantita na. So I never knew that this plant love of mine through the years would earn me a business, a little small income during the COVID years. Remember how yeah. everyone loved plants. And for me, plants were second nature to have around the house. The second thing I did was early in our marriage, I enrolled in a course to become a licensed real estate broker which is my practice to this very day. So somehow as wives, it would be nice if we could be workers in the home, busy with our hands, doing things that can also help the family uh, earn extra money, you know, in, a, in the time that you are allowed to as a housewife, as a mother. So that's what we learned to be useful to our family and also to continue to glorify God in every moment of our lives. Let me just say also, all the couples here listening, make sure that you... Uh are transparent with each other, have one bank account, maybe four bank accounts, but all of them, make sure that they're all and or. Hindi yung separated, kanya kanya, you do this, I'll do that, no. Put it all together, be one when it comes to finances. Be transparent, talk about your budgets together, talk about your future savings and your plans for spending, etc. That's yeah. crucial for couples. Yeah, thank and you for your that advice. Or wives, choose yeah. your company, choose the company you spend time with. And even the singles, because you may be content. You will sympathize with this thought of mine. You may be content, but when you are always with people who are earning more, boasting about what they buy, wearing design clothes, temptation. the temptation to want more is always at your doorstep. So choose the people you're with. Uh, keep your feet on the ground. Be very... Uh, humble with the way you live because truly humility is the only way to be successful even in how you handle your money thank you how about you steve ano naman yung ano experience how has your experience changed your perspective and attitude toward money <clears throat> so okay in terms of Ang ganda kasi ng mga sinabi ni Pastor. <laughs> Ang hirap i-top yun, no? <laughs> In terms of experience, I think, uh, di ba, as we grow our company, as we grow our business, no? of course, there will be a lot of still temptation, challenges. As sabi nga ni Pastor Jerby, how will you know if, there, if it's contentment or not? So I have a short story to share regarding this. So I or during 2017, uh, at the end of 2017, we have our account L'Oreal. They were the number two health and beauty brand in Lazada, and by end of that year, we beat the number one. So after three days, when we beat the number one, they announced it during 12 p.m. So 12:15, I got a call from Procter and Gamble, the former number one, asking for a meeting. Okay. At that time. They were telling me, bottom line was, Steve, uh, we want to do business with you. But you need around 40 million pesos 
for us to be able so binilang ko na around 40 million pesos ang kailangan so one of a good you know uh, brother of mine told me Steve baka grid na yan baka hindi baka wala ka ng contentment baka grid na yan and I was very cautious kasi nga galing nga ako sa utang na sobrang greedy nga ako kaya baka inano ni Lord no so sabi ko sige I pray I pray about it and when I prayed about it, ang gumano sa akin ni Lord, Steve, this is the parable of the talent. What I give you, I'll be the one who you multiply it. So sabi ko, Lord, it's not about greed, but it's about sa akin. No time na was, what's the talent that you have given me? So sabi ko, sige, Lord, I was at peace in, you know, getting the PNG business. May problema na lang was, I need another 40 million for that business to be able to accept that business. You know, so but I asked my discipler during that time. Some because how will I go about it? Should I, you know, um, put ang sa banko or what else? So sabi niya, better to get an investor so that while you're building your business, you're not stressed in making sure payments of interest. That's why I opened up to an investor who invested in me, and we were able to get the Procter and Gamble business in a few months' time. So parang sa akin, that's a lesson that you can always ask the Lord where you, where He wants you to be talaga. And if you're at peace, at least all the problems na dumadating or challenges na dumadating, alam mo, you are walking in His way so that hindi ka rin tamaan ng problema. You know, alam mong kasama mo siya doon sa mga problems na... Kasi nandun pa rin naman yung 40 million na problema eh. Pero at least I was at peace na God will be the one to provide because He wants me to accept it. Parang gano'n. So, yun wow. yung isang lesson na natutunan ko rin. Oh. Yes. So, humility, no? Humility and then hindi ka na jump right away. You ask uh, the mm -hmm. Lord for His ano, decision and then you ask advice from people. Mm -hmm. Kasi that was a good advice. Look for an investor. Diba? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, pwede bang repeat lang? What was that business of yours or the product that you sold on Lazada ba yun that, ano, that hit number two and then at the end of the year, it hit number one? Ah, so, uh, so, yung business ko kasi is we handle yung mga multi... Uh, for example, L'Oreal was... Uh, so, I was the online distributor for L'Oreal. No? Ah. So, so uh, account ko siya noong time na yun. And they were the number two health and beauty brand. Yeah. But right now, we handle Procter & Gamble, we handle Unilever, Nestle, L'Oreal, Abbott, San Miguel. So, iba wow. na yung So, we're yeah. the, we enable e-commerce for all of these brands and retailers. Wow. So, you can just okay. imagine, Kiki, the, those are big brands. So, Steve is handling all the the digital sales. Here's a lot of Shopee. Live with below your means lang, ah. Means lang. Needs the mga shampoo, sabon. Needs na wala niya, So, when you're buying from all of these brands, technically, you're buying from us. Yun yung negosyo na. So, we handle the offline or online shops na mga brands at retailers. Wow. Okay. Be faithful to the Lord and then siya na bahala sa'yo. Right? Okay, grabe, from 32 million, you were able to pay that, and then God restored you, got you back up on your feet, and still maintained you in where your passion is, yung business. Galing. Yeah. And Chiki, do you know that, uh, in, Steve, totoo ba to? Uh, in 2022, after, only after five years uh, na, na incorporate yung business, 7.7 .7 billion. Um, in revenue, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, billion. Wow. <laughs> uh, uh, ni Lord, uh, <clears throat> no eyes has seen, no ears have heard, yes. no mind has conceived what God has in store for you. And yeah. I still remember, I was ish writing a check for a purchase for one of the brand, and it was around 32 million. And it got me tear in eye. Because I said, Lord, grabe. Dati, hirap na hirap ako, hindi ko alam kung paano ko bayarin yung 32 million. Ngayon, binigyan mo ako ng opportunity to write this check. Pampayad rin naman sa inventory, di ba? But, you know, how God has been faithful, na you remain faithful, you stay stay humble. Yun ang palagi sinasabi ko, I ask my D-group, 
uh, accountability na uy pag yung mayabang na ako sabihan mo ako I have people to make sure kasi yun nga yung kalaban ko palagi diba pag pag naging successful ka pride naman ang kalaban mo so I always you know have people in my life to always check na sabihan ako na mayabang na ako so I think pero yung those are the things that makes it more worthwhile na you have been faithful to the Lord and He will be the one to bless you Grabe, we're so happy for you. Magpa-discount ka naman dyan <laughs> for products. Yes. Okay. Yung question ko kay Steve, 7.7 billion in revenue. But uh, what has the Lord uh, revealed to you? How to use, of course, this is for the company. It's not all for Steve, right? But how has he revealed to you, you know, how to steward this huge amount of money? Of course, to, you know, to invest in uh other things in the business but for what i mean you said it's not just about you right well our, our mission talaga is to uplift filipino lives through the digital economy and i think god has not only blessed but i would say uh, annoying you know you know uh, parang god has prepared great years this company for you know for us to be able to be an inspiration to a lot of filipinos to be able to make an impact sa generation namin, not just, you know, in terms of finances, in terms of, you know, but in terms of having this faith-driven uh, individuals in our company to really show that God is in control, that God is good, and God is our almighty Savior. And, you know, hopefully we we show the light that this is the way. Ito yung ano talaga ng kumpanya namin. Even for me and for my team, na, you know, it's not just about money anymore. It's about being a blessing to other people and showing, you know, the path to the Lord. Yes, what a Christ-centered business uh, with God as your true boss. As a mission, as a mission, no? Because yeah, there's no Christian business naman eh, or Christian, <laughs> or Christian corporation, but, yes. you know, we be able to uh, inspire others to follow friends. Yes, because you as the leader, Steve, you're the Christian, so you're heralding that. <laughs> so thank you for, for being there in the marketplace. Yeah. So, Chiki, I think we're ready for our Q&A. Uh, maraming uh, so magtanong here. Okay. Actually, ang dami pa naming tanong eh, pero uh, kumisan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh, sige. so do we have a question from our audience? You guys, yeah. kung meron mo kayong tanong, just type it in the chat box, but don't yeah. make it too long para makita natin sa screen. This is from Maria Chell. How to join the Biblical Financial Study, Pastor Joby? <laughs> well, we hold it in CCF every uh, twice a year sometimes. So uh, get a hold of a uh, CCF website you know and you'll see when the next one is coming up. Yeah. Pastor okay. Joby, in the meantime, uh, I know because the, the workshops aren't like before with the 10 weeks, but what are other resources maybe that people can uh, access? In the meantime, like now, of course, they're they're looking online for sure. So yeah. maybe instead of them looking for other resources, you can recommend uh, some videos well, or I know programs online. In, in my YouTube channel, there's one on, on how to manage money. So it's one hour and the basic principles are all there. So just go to Joby Soriano and YouTube. That's it. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Ito, um, Pastor Joby, from the point of view of a church leader, is money good or bad? Is being rich good or yeah. bad? That's a great question. And the answer is neither. It's neither good nor bad. The, the key is what do you do with the money? Because there are many rich people in the Bible, Job, David, Solomon, Abraham, many, many. But it's what you do with the money that God gives you. And he sees how faithful you are. The more faithful you are in being a conduit, not a container. Don't keep it to yourself, but be a blessing to others. The more he'll see that you're a blessing. He wants to bless you so that you can bless others. So people will see that God is the blessing. So it's not whether it's good or bad. It's neutral. Contentment is the key, no? Yes. Yeah. Satisfaction in the Lord. And yeah. tricky. Also, what do you do with it? Like what Pastor Joey said, it could be money can be the god of people, right? And yeah. it could also yeah. be used by God for His purpose, if God is our God. 
Jesus is our Lord, yes. Sabi nga nila, money is just a fuel. Uh, yeah. yeah. So where are you, where, where is your vehicle go, going towards with? You just need money for the fuel. Ah. So for your mission in life, that's the vehicle that's going to, you know, give you the fuel to go. Yeah. Yeah. You'll also know if money is your God when you respond in a way. Let's say you had a business opportunity. And this happened recently for my real estate. I had a business opportunity, in other words, to do a sale. But after a day of confirming the sale, the next day I was told that, no, it's no longer going to push through. And, you know, for, for a licensed broker who worked so hard for it, yeah. I start plunging. And then I remember the promises of God. I give you the ability to earn. I will give you things at the right moment. And, you know, I was able to respond to the parties involved in in a way I, I i don't know where it came from the words were from god i said you know don't feel bad that you had to cancel i know this is all god's design let's all move on and god is the provider you know and then some the person got back to me on a personal level and said cindy why did you say that normally when we do this to brokers they freak out you know they they show offense but they're so offended i said you know i i don't I don't want to do that because the reputation of God in my life, I really believe God is my provider. And when God is my provider, my heart is settled. And uh, the beauty about it is God delivered me from that sad state. And then at the right time, he was able to confirm my sale. So, you know, I really trust God. Even Steve, when when I have BIR issues, because see, sometimes, you know, people don't want to pay the right taxes when you close your sale. And then when you close your sale, they're gonna say, "Can you have double deed of sale?" And I'm like freaking out because I don't wanna, I don't wanna cheat the government. And there are many times I've backed out on a sale because I cannot do an illegal document. And you know, even that, even if I don't get rich because other brokers sell every week, I don't sell sometimes for years. But I have peace knowing that I, I have peace with God. I please God. And when I need, when we need, God's gonna provide. Uh, we mean yeah so i i stick to that promise of god now he's the provider and i do things legally and and i satisfy the government in every in every area of my taxation okay thank you for that kailangan talaga no god first trust god Always. do your part if the deal doesn't go through god is still sovereign yeah Yes, inspiration yes. for a lot of us in business okay so do we have um some more questions here what yes. to do if spouse <laughs> does not like to join accounts it's all about trust you got married to a person you should trust them and if they don't want to join accounts they need to see a counselor to find out <laughs> what, is the, what is the root why because, hey, listen, guys, those of you who are in this situation, without uh, trust in your marriage, as far as finances, what about everything else? So stop, Muna. Stop, Muna. Seek counseling and move on. If the question is from a woman, I would like to speculate that she doesn't trust her spouse to handle. Maybe she has more money than him. Yeah. Maybe. And she doesn't trust him. Maybe because of a past issue that he was not trustworthy. Maybe he gave to relatives without your knowing. Maybe he gambled it. We don't know, but it's normally history. So what do you do? If you're the husband of this lady, you should confess and just say, you know, let's do this together. We'll be transparent. There is a time when you really have to put your accounts together. It's the safest thing to do. It's the godly thing yeah. to do. You can have an and account where both of you have to sign checks before they're given out so that there's uh there's control check and balance so yes. so tita cindy um are you saying that uh, the repentance is necessary before joining the account kasi baka magamit na naman for something else alam mo yeah. ang hirap pag may experience na niloko ka na so i i know where you're coming from i sympathize with you but then again we go back to the basics who loves you the most who is your provider it's not your husband. It's not your wife. Whoever earns it, it's really God, and it's the same with money, with love, with everything that is in in our life. And if we cannot trust God for each and every basic thing in our life, we'll never. You know, men will fail you, women will fail you. 
but God will never fail you. So you may not be rich in the eyes of the world, but you are rich in the blessings of God in your life. You are complete. John 10, 10. I came that you may have life and have it to the fullest. I love that verse. Ikaw, Steve, you and your wife, you have joint accounts. We have joint accounts, yes. <laughs> no secret. Uh, mahirap kasi pag, pag, pag nawawala si negosyo, kailangan may mag-sign ng, ng cheque talaga. So talaga <laughs> nakag-joint kami. <laughs> Okay. Uh, is your wife watching right now, Steve? Or is he beside you? <laughs> is she beside you? Where, where, where is your wife right now, Steve? Is she uh, uh, at home? At home. I'm at, at the office now. Eh. Nasa office na. Uh, so, yes. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure wala namang mari reveal dito na hindi niya alam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ito, uh, Rina, would you like to read this question? Yes, uh, from RD and Miriam Roberto. What is your stand on having a prenuptial agreement? Oh, yung yeah. Uh, yeah. Finances. Yeah. And... Hindi kasi uso yan sa Philippines, eh, di ba? Uso yan sa Western worlds. But here, when you talk about prenuptial, nagkakagulo pa, nag-aaway pa. Like, I had a friend, I have a friend na we almost didn't get married because the, the husband or the boyfriend at that time did not want prenuptial. So what's your stand on this, Pastor Zuby? Well, if I can say a prenuptial is simply a contract stating that if we separate, whatever is mine is mine and whatever is yours is yours. To me, if that's how you're going to start a marriage, don't even start because there's no trust. There's no real love. You cannot build a marriage based on distrust. Plus, so, it assumes there's an ending to the marriage yes. before death. There L is a separate. Yeah. There is an exit. You know, we always believe, even when we would discuss and argue, uh, our marriage, there is no exit. We cannot end this marriage except by death and by the Lord's calling. And so when we argue, when we fight, walang exit yung. Pero when you have a prenup, it assumes already that it may come to a point we will not make this marriage work exactly so it starts from there can you imagine the root is already planted before you even marry i i am very much against a prenup uh and uh well a lot of people are doing it for the safety of their mostly their 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 assets you know so that's our stand okay um all right yeah steve what do you need and I don't I have four daughters I don't think we'll have any prenup in that sense also nice okay so um let's move on this one is from Elaine Pernites question number one is it bad as a Christian to borrow money in case you got short ayan issue nga yan parang you can never be in debt don't borrow money but what if you're super short Pastor Joby Never borrow money that you cannot pay. Okay. Never yeah. borrow money that you cannot pay. So if you're going to borrow money, listen carefully. If you're going to borrow money, make sure that you have something to back it up. Because the one thing you don't want to do is tell your creditor, I'm sorry, I, I can't pay. Your word of honor and God's name is at stake. So you, you've got to find other ways to, to make ends meet. You've got to find other ways. But bottom line, we don't recommend yeah. that you borrow because it, it will also mean that you will get used to that habit of being short and and borrowing. It's a really bad habit. And uh, it's, it would be nice if before you borrow, like we would always, you know, like Steve, you know this, we see all your assets, all your liabilities. You find out what you can get rid of, non-performing, maybe get rid of it, raise funds, to pay when you're short or raise or sell something when you're short but do not add debt because you're short my prescription would be if you're short find something to sell there's always something uh, you can sell even secondhand in order okay that's short so even if ang ibabaro babaruan mo is a relative like your brother or your dad or your mom even if anyone yeah, you put yourself in a compromising position because most people who borrow, let me just say, will not repay. Let me, that's that's a fact. 90% uh, will not pay back. 
They'll even especially, forget who you are. Especially when it comes to relatives. <laughs> it will cause problems. Yeah, but... I have a principle in terms of... When people ask for... They want to borrow money from me. Uh, two things I do. I just tell them... I mean, reason muna, if it's emergency, like sickness in the family or anything, uh, I'd just rather give them and I just told, tell them, wala, hindi na to utak, ano na to, parang help ko na lang to sa inyo, rather yeah. than borrowing money na. Pero I won't, I only give what's willing, I'm willing to let it go. Ibig sabihin ka, hindi ko na masingil yan or hindi yan ako bayaran, okay lang sa akin kasi parang bigay ko na yan. Pero kung hanggang saan lang, para hindi rin ako nasasaktan. So for example, if somebody wants to borrow 200,000 niya for whatever reason I'll just give I, I'll tell him ay important sa akin kung anong reason eh kunyari nagkasakit kailangan mayaran everything so I'll just give them o oh, sige ito 20k sample lang ito na lang sa'yo para what tulong ko na yan pero hindi kita mapautang kasi alam ko pag utang hindi mo rin mabayaran eh so that tuloy lang yung relationship natin pero wala ring uh, in terms of sa akin hindi, I, I, I was willing to let it go Parang ganun yung, yung principle behind it. So basically, hindi rin ako nagpapautang talaga kasi alam ko mahirap utang. Ah, mahirap magpaningil sa utang. <laughs> oh, let, me, let me just also say, uh, a, yes. lot of times, a lot of times a person is in a situation where they need to borrow. Why? Because they've been unfaithful as a steward. They've not been handling money God's way. So what is God doing? God is teaching them to humble themselves. God is teaching them a lesson. Change. And so here's God, here's you, and if outsiders come in between to rescue. to rescue that person, right. guess what? You have now stopped God's life lesson for that person, and you will experience the, the punishment, the discipline. So allow God to teach the person the humbling lesson so that they learn. Because if you just bail them out and rescue them, well, they won't learn anything. So really and truly, find out like Steve says what is the reason what's the cause if it's something life or death, life or death then definitely help them out but mm -hmm. otherwise let God teach them the lesson and what if what if they tell you pero Pastor Joby ito na yung creditor ko tinatawagan na ako ni ano ni HSBC or ni Citibank or ni whatever uh, credit card paano yan are you telling me okay lang yun Paano yung yeah. testimony ko sa kanila? O oh, yan, paano yan? Yeah. Ganyan. Ako, pwede ako mag-share niyan. I have so much, ang dami kong may utang, di ba? They keep on calling me. Kaya nga sanay na ako tumanggap ng tawag eh. <laughs> okay. I, I talk to them, communicate to them properly na I don't have the means to pay. I, don't, I cannot commit amount of money. What I can commit is a portion of the earnings that I get every month. Then, kahit 500 yan or 1,000 yan, I'm faithfully binabayaran ko pa kundi konti. So that they feel like that may effort akong ginagawa month on month when I was paying my debt. No? So I think important rin alam din nila yung puso mo. No? Yun yung sa akin. That's why hindi ako nag, yung ang daming ganyang uh, scenario na ay, nahiya sila na masisira sila sa social media na bones sila sa utang, everything, tos they'll just try to kite it and everything ganyan. But I think, for me, you have to face the music and talk to your creditors and show them ano yung availability and not put yourself, you're promising something that you don't really have by the end of the month or something. So, yun yung important thing, uh, thing that in terms of talking to your creditors. Be, be transparent, be open, and have the right intention na I'm willing to pay. Yeah. You will receive, you will still receive Christian man or hindi, you will still receive all of this shh, na grabe ka ganyan ganyan, ganyan di ba? Tatanggapin eh, kasi it's a consequence of being greedy, consequence of wrong the wrong choice that I made. But ang importante, are you willing to pay it back even if it takes you a lifetime? And that goes for your credit card question debt, no? Even if they come to you with a sub story that the bank calls them, okay, the bank won't kill them. The bank will just run after them. Now, they need to learn the lesson like Steve went through, like we went through, the hard way. Because if after that lesson is learned, it's a life lesson. As they grow old, their children will learn it. It will be a generation next to them that will learn that solid thing about that money is really 
a, a problem in life, it will always be, and it cannot be your master. Your credit card is not your master card. Your master is God, talaga. And so if they live with debt, a credit card debt, or, um, you know, you need to guide them, like we did, many people, we guided them how to reduce the debt, go to the bank, tell them to stop the card, uh, make, you know, make a commitment to pay, and it works, it works. They paid it in a few months, or maybe a year, but they never went into that debt again. Nice. But what if, here's a question, no? is it okay to borrow to start a business? Yeah, yung mga business loans. What do you think, Pastor Joby? Well, if your business plan is solid, if you're if you you start slow, I always tell people start small, start small and let it grow. Don't start with you know fifty million right away. Start with the five thousand. I started with fifty thousand. So start slow and allow the business to prove itself, and then you keep reinvesting it. Mm -hmm. So you're not presumptuous. You're not saying God, I'm I'm in control. No, allow God to bless it little by little. So. If you want to borrow for a little, make sure, I always say, make sure that you have something to back it up. Yeah. Or uh, totally agree with Pastor Joby, debt to equity ratio. You need to have equity before you have debt yeah. in the in the business. And there's a ratio to it so that you'll be able, you, you cannot over leverage yourself on the things and negotiate. So start small, start fast, tail forward. You know, best advice for a you know body entrepreneur. Yes, but Steve, as you said, what you learned um, before starting, pray first and and consult your godly mentors. Because I like what Steve said earlier. Now he has his accountability partners and group because we all have our blind spots. So even those who are walking with the Lord, there's still a uh, of course, a tendency, right, to uh, to go back to our old ways. So we need people to walk with us. Yeah. So other questions from Marie Cor. How do I make up to God if I have earned enough but miss giving back to Him through tithe? So maybe, yeah, in the past, uh, maybe nagawa. How does that work? <laughs> if God is leading you to make up for the tithes by giving Him one check to cover it all, then go for it. You know, it's what's in your heart. Yes. Thank you for that. So very straightforward. Our next question. Yeah. When do you know if it's time to close your business? Is it when it goes bankrupt or before it goes to that point? Gets to that point. Yeah. Pastor Joby. I would say before it gets bankrupt, cut your losses early. You know, if you see that after six months, it's really going, you know, negative, negative all the time. You know, just uh, make sure that you can pay off your employees, their separation pay. That's the key. And then close the business, sell the assets, uh, find something else. But uh, don't wait till you're rock bottom zero. Yeah. So uh, in short, uh, you have to be realistic. <laughs> And and not uh, extremely uh, idealistic and optimistic to the point that you know you're hoping because bahaganan Pastor Joby, you know, I'll continue to pray and ask God, but you know when it's obvious, like you said, exactly. when the numbers well, it, are. Uh, I, I think the important thing is to have a passive cash flow. Yeah. You know, even though you do pana really recuperate investment more, but if you have a passive cash flow, you can sustain the business. So if you have a I would say a uh, broken business model. It must have been your expense is more than the revenue and you're burning cash month on month. It's time to close. Yeah. Mm. Because yeah. your business model doesn't work. So it needs to work at a small scale before you Go. scale it up. Yes. And uh, Steve, perhaps you can also recommend, not necessarily right now, uh, business mentors also because it's very important especially for for startups right mm. it uh it's not easy to do it from scratch yeah so there's another question here from rd and miriam oh steve came from the insurance business so what's your stand on insurance or insurance and investments also oh, the, insurance, and yeah. the insurance is important right? after that is six months of living expense 
then you get a health insurance and a life insurance, diba? And so ngayon, one year na daw, sabi ni Pastor Joby. One year of emergency fund, and then of course, we need to have health insurance. Especially nung nagka-COVID, kung nagka-COVID ka, wala kang health insurance, how much will you pay for it with no business and everything? So, insurance are very vital, important. If yeah, I can just, yeah, if I can simply say, if you get insurance, make sure it's uh, term insurance, very basic term insurance, but always get it for the breadwinner. Don't get it for the wife because if you're the breadwinner, you can manage to handle your future without insurance because you've already uh, taken care of you know, the earnings. At the same time, the key is medical insurance because, wow, yeah. medicine hospitalization is crazy. So get an affordable medical insurance to take care of you if any accidents, sicknesses, critical diseases happen to you. Okay. Yes. All right. So talagang important yun na insurance, especially medical. Okay. So this one is from Rochelle. Is it a sin if I don't get business permit because my small online business doesn't earn that much? Thank you, Paul. I believe um, the, Pastor yeah. Joby? I believe the government regulation is that anything over 20000 a month needs to be reported. So if you're below 20000 uh, but maybe the, the amount has changed recently. I don't know. But check what is the the limit in which you need to have a business permit and then follow it legally. Very yeah. important that we follow it legally. No? Yeah. Kunde, nako, submitting to our earthly authorities is also submitting yes. to God. Okay, <laughs> Even yes. when we don't agree. God's avenue to bless you. You know, a, a lot of times we make, we make excuses like the government is corrupt or, you know, I don't yeah. know where my money goes. Why should I pay them? Besides, I'm honest, I help people, I help the poor. Um, that's that's going to go crazy if you follow that, the way of the world. So I would say to anyone listening, should I pay taxes? Definitely, honest taxes. Should I have a permit? Definitely. Every year you renew that. Kami rin, kahit broker kami, every year yan. And you know, it's, a, it's punishable by jail if you practice being a broker without a license. And there's so many who do that. And uh, that's why I upgrade my education every three years, every two years. And I think everyone should just honor God by honoring the government. That way, we not only help ourselves, we help the country, and we, and we help the, the reputation of God move forward among believers. And that's what's important, that His name be glorified in everything we do, in everything we say and how we operate. Dapat God talaga stands firm and apparent in our lives. Yun lang talaga ang important. Indeed, Steve, yes. I want to say one thing before we ever, you know, Steve, by the way, dyan pala ako bumili ng pants ko. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pero online, meron yung pants ko na. Uh-huh. Ayan pala. Kaya pala, tinan mo naman ang skin ni Tita. <laughs> no, no, uh, no purpose of uh, advertising here, but yes. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to name the brand, pero tama And it's okay, no problem. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that uh, baka, ano, hindi na nag-endorse tayo, hindi naman. So, no, but no, no, yes, no. We, we want to promote great deals by Steve. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, so wrap up na. Uh, last na lang, uh, uh, there's a question here and I know it's relevant kasi sa maraming tao na watching us. Yung mga may credit card debt, and you mentioned, Pastor Joey, Tita, that you don't use credit cards. But what if you're still in the middle of that? Like, it's yeah. three years mo na binabayaran. What, what's the strategy? Like, obviously, you're earning, you have needs, but yeah. nabaon ka sa utang in the past for whatever reason. Very simple. Credit card. Cut your yeah. credit card. Hindi mo makontrol. Very simple. We use credit cards. We actually but we, do. We use it to our advantage. We use the 30-day window of no interest. So you have to know your cutoff date. Yeah. Purchase your item just before then if it's a big item. And you have 30 days free interest yeah. if it's not one of those interest-free deals. All you have to do with credit cards is make sure that you are able to pay the full amount every month. If you cannot, then your credit card is controlling you and it'll go out of hand. So if you cannot uh, handle that, you cut your card. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Use it to your advantage. Yeah. Steve, you cut your card before? 
No, no, no. I only have one credit card. Simple lang buhay ko, but I always pay them on time. I don't do kahit may mga zero interest. I just I just want it monthly, and I use uh, that advice na pay the full amount. Uh, we don't we never use, credit card interest rates are the highest. Are is one of the highest in the market. So yeah, it's okay. a very yeah. bad investment or very bad financial decision to pay less or use that credit loan sa credit card. So that's one of the worst. I would say, uh, in terms of how to handle finances, using credit card loans yeah. because those interests are, all, are truly outrageous. Yeah. Or Steve, like you, you were right, in debt for 12 years. What about those? Uh, hindi pa rin mabayaran yung credit card after now. <laughs> yung, I didn't uh, use my, I, I, I attended the, the classes because I never really use ah, my credit yeah. card as an interest payment. Eh. Uh, I never okay. use it. So wala ang problema ko talaga. I was I have I have loans sa mga tao, hindi sa uh, mga banko. Uh, hindi mm-hmm. sa banko. Okay. Yeah. But uh, as we learned Chicky earlier, uh, whatever mm-hmm. that that is whether sa tao or sa banko, uh, we're encouraged na you can pay it kahit one uh, you know month at a time, one day at a time, right? Uh, it, it's never too late to to restore what was broken in the past uh, by the Lord. Ayan. So thank you for the audience questions. Uh, we, we will ask, uh, yeah, the last advice for the day, Chiki, what would you like to ask our guests as we okay. wrap up? Yeah, short long, very shortly. Pastor Joby and um, Cindy, what would you like to impart to our audience right now that they can uh, no, use and you know right after this ma-apply na nila ano yung mga tips na gusto niyo ma-remember nila out of all this for me the temptation in life will always be will it be god or money there will always be a decision time daily yan. will i honor god or will i grab you know so you need to understand that god wants you to put him number one in your life so when you make a money decision you always ask god lord is this something you want me to do? Will this honor you? The manner by which I'll do it. Is it an amount that you think I should? In other words, consult God all the time. And if you're married, always consult your husband and be transparent. And remember that when God sees you faithful with a little, he will allow you to experience more so that you'll be faithful with more. And your life should really be a testimony of who God is in your life. And I, I just told Joby yesterday, you know, as Christians, we want to show the world that we live a victorious life because we honor God in the way we live. So it will show in the manner by which you speak and the way you dress, the way you talk, and every part of you, you know, be a pleasing aroma. Like when you leave the room, people will say, you know, I really experienced God when I heard that conversation or I learned more about God. So it's not about you always it's always going to be about god even in the success of your business in your ministry whatever it is yeah for me i would want to encourage all the listeners here to constantly involve god in your lives when it comes to your finances that's your biggest test Mm -hmm. how you handle so pray and ask seek god's wisdom uh, on a practical sense live below your means stay within your budget don't get into debt um, be transparent sure. with your spouse. Uh, tithe, you know, honor God first. So there are many practical things that you can do, but the first and foremost is make sure that you and God are intimately related because without him, you can do nothing. How can he be your provider? Even if you say God is a provider, how can he be your prov- provider if you've never really surrendered your life to him? That's it. Thank you. How about you, Steve? Anything that you would like to uh, leave uh, for our audience to remember? Yes, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I like to I like to share uh, a principle, the bamboo tree principle. No, but there's a saying, "Kung walang tinanim, walang aanihin." But the problem with with us Filipinos is we have this get rich quick mentality. No, I remember if you if you if you plant a mango seed. The next day, you'll have a mango tree, a mango plant na lalapas na yan. Pwede nang kainin. If you plant a sambakida seed in just one week, 
meron ka ng sambakita flowers. But if you plant a bamboo tree, for the next five years, you won't see anything like nothing's really growing. But underneath it, the roots are being, you know, are growing uh, rapidly. And in just as, after five years, in just a span of two to three weeks, the bamboo tree grows to 100 feet. And it goes against that sa mga storms, sa mga ano. So sa, sa, katulad din sa atin, we, when we plant our seed, it needs to have a long-term uh, mindset. Na not everything should be quick, not everything should be fast, but you go to the test of time, the test of, you know, you know mga challenges and everything, and you will grow like a bamboo tree. So God bless, yun lang. And uh, yes, and Steve, so I, I I also saw how you know, with what you experience, it's not just the Lord making you humble, but making you patient also in your time of waiting. Because I can just imagine twelve years in debt and all the things you went through. Wow! And of course, the most important message of all, Pastor Joby, uh, more than just our financial stewardship, is uh, there's good news amidst the bad news. So. I know people are going through a lot of bad news nowadays, but what would that greatest encouragement be as we end? For, for all of you who are listening right now, maybe you've made many mistakes in the past. Maybe you're in a situation today where you are in so much debt that you don't know what to do. Let me just tell you, the biggest debt that you and I have is our debt to God for sin. And no matter what, we cannot pay for it. We cannot get credit. To, to advance it for us. There's nothing we can do, but it's already been done. And listen to this message. The debt that you cannot pay has already been paid. And that debt that we owe God is the debt of our sin. Jesus paid for that debt. And he gives you the opportunity to receive a debt-free life, mm -hmm. a life filled with, with forgiveness. So don't just focus on on your personal life, focus on the fact that he has given you eternal life. If you receive him as your Lord and your Savior, it's all about committing your life to him. And I pray that all of you who are listening make that first and foremost important decision. Give your life to God. Submit and surrender to him, and he will then guide you in all your steps. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Deepest thanks to our wonderful guests, Pastor Joby, um, Cindy, Steve. Grabe, thank you for sharing with us your heart, your testimonies uh, with no shame, with total glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Dami namin natutunan. I'm so encouraged. Yes. So right after this, I'm going to call my husband and we're going to have a meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate you. Please know that. And we pray that God will bless you even more so that you can be used to bless other people. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank Thank you, you so Pastor Joby, Cindy, and Steve. Uh, Thank you, for those of you who, yes, uh, who learned so much from this episode and you'd like to share this with uh, people whom you think need to hear it and even maybe those who think they don't need to hear it but you want to send it to them anyway we are on social media so yes please do follow us on facebook ccf life to the max instagram and youtube yes we are also uh live on facebook so you can share it on facebook if you want youtube it's also there and more importantly we have our zoom session later the details you'll see there uh after right after this broadcast you, you may join our zoom room if you're joining for the first time join room number one we have a special welcome room for you if you're joining for the nth time join the room that uh, has been assigned to you and we would like to have a chat with you we have our discussions discussion questions after this our discussions are a lot and i know you want to continue talking but uh we have to end our session and lastly we want to look for volunteers oh no no we're looking for volunteers we want volunteers for us because we're looking for them uh, to serve jesus uh, backroom tech creative speaker care um uh, DD care assistant, social media management, copywriters. All you need is a willing heart to serve. We're here to help you and uh, train you however we, right, Chiki? 
Right, naka-mute pala ako. <laughs> okay, so finally, shout out to the Eastern Police District and our regular viewers from the different parts of the globe. Hello to you guys and thank you for being with us this morning. And with that, we conclude today's program. I'm Chicky, thanking all of you for joining us. Yes, and last but not the least, Chicky, we will see them again, God willing in two weeks because we have our broadcast every second and fourth monday so we will see you again on july 24 as the lord wills and please do invite your friends and family it is truly such a wonderful time not just to learn together but to really be transformed together in the lord it is your host Diva Galveston. it's such a joy to serve with you, Chicky, and with Pastor Joby, Cindy, and uh, Steve as well. Thank you to all our fasties and our back room. We appreciate Bye. you. To God be all the glory. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.